Hi, Todd Dunn here on February 7, 2018. Today I'm going to be working on assembling my two 50 watt solar panels uh, together and prepping them for mounting on the boat. In order to do that, I'm going to attach them together with some aluminum flat bar, which I bought yesterday, and then wire the two panels in series. So, let's get going. Here are the two solar panels I've got. The one on the right is an older panel that I bought in 2012, and the one on the left is a brand new panel that I just bought uh, last month in January of 2018. They're both 50 watt mono crystalline solar panels, which I am going to wire together in series after I attach them together with some aluminum flat bar to make them into a rigid assembly that I can carry up onto my boat and mount them on the cabin top. I have the panel on the right mounted on a boat. I put it on in 2012 and a little aluminum tabs you can see uh, on either side were for that mounting. What I'm going to do today is take two pieces of aluminum flat bar and you can see one down there. That's 1 8 inch by 3 quarter inch aluminum flat bar. I'm going to use it to tie the panels together by screwing the flat bar to the back of the panels and that will make them into a single unit that I can then mount. One of the things I'm going to do is duplicate the positions of the mounting brackets on the panel on the right so that I can mount these with screws into the cabin top on either end of the two panel assembly and also in the middle. So I'm going to leave a small gap so that I can get a screw down to the aluminum flat bar that's connecting the panels. All right, I've turned the solar panels over and I've got the aluminum flat bar laid out on them. Because uh, you've got, I've got these tabs screwed onto the old panels here and there, I'd like to reuse those holes when I make these mounts so that when I drill mounting holes in the new flat bar, it will line up with the uh, existing mounting holes for the first panel and I'll only have to put two new mounting brackets on the cabin top. And also I can reuse these holes. I don't have to drill any holes in this panel. This panel also conveniently has some holes drilled in it already that I think I can reuse these two and maybe these two. I'll just have to see how it lines up. I might have to drill a new hole here and here, but that'll be about it as well as the holes in the flat bar. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark the flat bar for cutting because it's a little longer than I need. So I'm going to line it up for length with the existing tabs right there. And now mark it for cutting, extending about the same amount there and over there. And just for reference, I'm going to put a, a mark where that is there and there so when I come back from cutting these I'll be able to get them in the same place. Okay so the next step is to cut off the excess of these two 48 inch flat bars. The two 50 watt panels are about 43, 44 inches wide altogether so I don't need that extra aluminum so I'm going to go lop that off with a hacksaw. I've now cut the two pieces of aluminum flat bar to length. I just cut the ends off with a hacksaw and cleaned up the cuts with a uh, hand file. Now I'm going to take the existing tabs off so that I can free up those holes. I'm going to need a different bit. Uh, here we go. These are 
Number eight, stainless steel screws. They're machine screws, not self-tappers. There we are. First one's off. And I have nylock nuts on these. All right, those four tabs are off. And what I'm going to do now is lay out my new strips here and see what I can do in terms of getting everything lined up to drill some holes in the rod, in the aluminum flat bar. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to mark these for drilling. There, 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 and there. And so at this point, the next step will be to get my drill set up and drill this. The, for this size screw, the clearance hole is 5.30 seconds. I'm going to drill these over the actual solar panels because my wife would not appreciate aluminum shavings on the carpet here. And this is aluminum, so you really don't need a center punch for that, just good pressure. And you don't need to drill a smaller lead hole. Make sure these line up properly. That looks like. Put that in and drop it in the hole so that it's all set. I'm going to go over here, make sure I'm in the right place. block is there to prevent me from drilling into the solar panel. Put a screw in here. Snug these two on. Now let's look at this. See where exactly that needs to be on this line. So I think if I put this here and there, I'll put that screw down a little further so that it will penetrate well and hold that in place. Put my block of wood under here. my hole. <laughs> Drilling that pretty slow because I didn't want to throw fragments of uh, them onto my carpet. And I'll hold that one in place. And we'll draw the final one here.
that's all set. So I can mount that one up if I wish, which I will do. Screw under there. And I'm going to reuse these screws. It's just a matter of putting the nuts on, which is a little hard to do because you haven't got a lot of room. But It's lined up, I think. Pliers on it to hold it for the last time. There we are. All set. I just have to put the nuts on the other three, and that piece of aluminum is mounted. Okay, the first one's done. All I need to do now is drill the holes for the other one and then drill the mounting holes in between, in the ends. So before I do that though, I'm going to clean up the uh, aluminum shavings from drilling the holes just to keep things tidy. Alright, now I'm going to do the second strip and we'll have the mounting all finished. Okay, those are all mounted. The only thing I'm going to do now to finish this off is I'm going to put another strip of aluminum across here just to make this a little bit more rigid. I decided to use one of the tabs I removed from this panel to give it a little more rigidity by screwing it through there in the middle between these two crossbars. And that makes a fairly rigid connection now. All that remains now is to drill my six mounting holes. I'm ready to drill my mounting holes, so I'll just eyeball these in in the middle. Move my backing. Alright, that's all finished. The only thing that remains to be done is to put these two panels in series, which means connecting this wire, which is the positive wire, to this wire on the other panel, which is negative. And because I do not have another one of these connectors, I'm going to have to cut the wire off. Which I wanted to do anyway. And I'll just put a regular butt connector in here with some shrink wrap over it. All right, I've collected the tools I'm going to need to do the job. Something to cut the wires with, a crimping tool, a couple of butt blocks, and some shrink tube. And I have a heat gun over here off view. So this is the negative. It's going to go to the positive wire. So what I'm going to do, I've got enough there, so I'm going to cut this wire. And we'll find something out. Go. Now, just have to strip this back a little so I can put the butt connector on it. There, about. Yeah, it's a little tricky to strip that. There we go. 
And I'm very pleased to note that this Renogy 50 watt monocrystalline solar panel is put together with tinned wires. And the question is, I think those look like number 12. Yeah. So I'm going to have to use a number 12 size crimp, which I have here. There it is. So I will just put this on here and crimp it. firmly on there. Okay, that's on there. These are connected positive to negative. Just have to hook it up to the solar controller and we're in business. You can see I've got this panel all ready to mount now. Just have to connect the positive and negative wires down to the controller. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up and I'd appreciate a subscription to my channel. Thanks again.